I have a little technical aptitude. How do I leverage that? Right. And I had a college degree. I had my bachelor's of uh, music and performance. I was just kind of, I guess I was between things and unsure what to do. And I really, I needed a job. Um, so as I got to learning, I guess I got more into learning about the job and I was always interested in like learning more things. Um, I remember one of the things that happened early on is, uh, so we had these two offices that were connected via, via internet. So the two offices worked together as one. And so you had the people that take the calls and then we had the people that dispatch the calls. Not all call centers are like that. That's how this one was. And the person in, in the office I was in that was like the main office, the other is kind of like a satellite. So the person in the office that I was in um, that could dispatch the calls went home sick. But there's somebody in the other office who could. Well, it was at the end. I was working four 10-hour shifts at the time. And I, my daughter was um, maybe, I don't know, a year, maybe a year old or so. And I had just finished, I was just finishing up my um, 10-hour shifts when the internet went down. And all of a sudden, we only had my office. We didn't have a satellite office. So there are three people in mine, and I was the most junior of of the three of us. And I didn't even know how to, like, put a call, like, on repeat, like, which is where you put it back. Like, you put it in a queue so it can come back to you so you don't don't lose the message in it, you know. And I called – at first, I called my mom and said – because she had my kid. And I'm like, hey, I'm not going to be home for a (laughs) while. (laughs) I mean, I could have, I'm sure I could have said, bye, see ya, good luck. I, I couldn't do that. So then, you know, I called the um, the operations manager who, you know, being an operations manager, especially then, you know, she is the on-call person, you know, if something happened at 3 a.m., even with IT at that point, she would have to come in. So I, you know, I called her and told her and she called one of the other supervisors from the other office to drive the hour down. So when the uh, manager came into the office, she asked me, have you ever dispatched calls before? Because usually, they, you know, they train you first. And I'm like, no, I haven't. She said, well, okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to read the instructions, do the best you can. If you're completely lost, go ahead and send the call to me. So that was my first time dispatching. And, and that like was, trial by fire. Right? I was kind of, thankfully, I was excited. <laughs> Well, I mean, and it's, that's that mindset that helped you succeed at this instead of just like hating your job and finding a new one the next day. Like, thank God you had that mindset going into it. Right. I'm like, somebody has to do something, you know? So I told everybody else, you know, how to park the calls, you know, how to just, you know, do what we could to keep it going. And um, I think I stayed an extra two hours and then finally, you know, and that probably helped too when I went to become like a team leader, just like front end supervisor. But, you know, and in, in back in those days, uh, a little over a decade ago, it was cool because things weren't as specialized. Like I know after a while, team leaders didn't learn as much, but I got to learn about some of the um, the programming for Infinity, which is the old version of the call software. So I got to learn some of that basic setup. And I, she encouraged me to look through the report. You know, don't be afraid to look through and figure things out. And a little while after doing that, I think is when I found out about the scripting so with, so Amtelco is like the company, you know, Cisco is the one everybody's heard of. If you've heard of call center stuff, you've probably heard of Cisco Unify. Yeah, there's like four main big ones that I know we dealt with that covered, I mean, it's got to cover like 80, 90%. I know we had like Cisco, we had Intel, we had um, Amtelco, we had Startel. And I know to people not in the call center industry, these may sound like crazy names, but like these three companies probably handle 70, 80% of all the call centers. I mean, like the same work gets done. It's just a matter of who the client is at the call center. Is it medical? Mm-hmm. Is it commercial? Is it whatever? And they're all trying to use the similar pick up this phone and give it to somebody software that you help integrate. But yeah, there's they're not perfect, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I remember one of the clients uh, was a uh, was a veterinarian that handled you know companion animals a lot, but they also handled some of the large you know farm animals, horses. And I remember. Um, during the third shift, I mean, I always worked first shift, so I heard about it after. But one evening during third shift, there was somebody who had called in with a mare that was pregnant. I think I think it was a broodmare that was pregnant or something. And wow. I forget if the baby died or if the ma- but the horse I think ended up dying. But the um, but the person who was taking those calls, you know, third a lot of times third shift you're by yourself, 
and the scripting was not set up for what do you do if somebody is calling in from this other vet that's saying that their horse is dying or that they're, you know, they're just, they're, it wasn't, you, you couldn't set it up. It wasn't set up for that scenario. So she yeah, actually no had to way. go and figure it out and do her best. And thankfully the customer, the, the client was understanding. I mean, and obviously we were sad. You don't want, you know, you don't want anybody or anything to, to die. Usually it's not a matter of life and death. Usually, thankfully. I think I might have been doing the scripting at that point. Yeah, I think I did because I think I actually set up that script that uh, failed. Yeah. Not failed, but I mean, I guess it failed, but it it was a good lesson for me too, maybe. Like, you can't predict everything. You cannot, man. I'll tell you. Like, I write code and you have a case statement that has a bunch of different things you're expecting and then else. And I mean... At some point, it's going to hit that else statement, right? Like you can't account for everything. It's just impossible. And then you have apartment clients that'll have, you know, sometimes dogs are left in apartments. I mean, which I, I mean, I, I don't know how often that happens. I hope not too often. You know, usually you have all these criteria for if you're going to reach on the call or not. And the client was actually upset when we reached them over this dog being left in the apartment and barking. Like, I don't think it was like it had been left for five minutes. I think it was over four hours or whatever. Yeah. But the uh, the manager really, you know, she supported what her agents decided to do. You know, she's like, this is what we should have done. We should have reached. The fact that they didn't want to be reached on it, you know, because you don't know, because it can damage the property. It can, you know, it's not good for the dog. It's not good for the property. It's, but oh, yeah. it's, it's fun. To, I don't know. Especially once you get more into the graphical, like, in, in the old format, you had like the basic message where you like filled out each of the fields. It was, you know, almost like if you just had a piece of paper with different questions on it, and you filled it out. But then the scripting, you know, we had the scripting that was more dynamic, that depending on what you answered to one question, it drove another. You know, some of those things with like the apartment complexes and stuff got fun, too, because like everything you count is an emergency. Oh, exactly. And I mean, like some properties may think it's an emergency and another property doesn't. Right. So then you've got like a new person who comes on and says, we want to do the same thing that you do for other property managers and you do it. And then you announce, you you notify them of something they don't want to be notified or don't notify them of something you do. I honestly don't think people know how to go to call centers and have them help. Like, I don't think they realize there's somebody like you to help program the logic, like that the business can just go to the call center and say, this is the business logic. Do you have somebody to make sure that gets to your call center people? You know what I mean? And you do, mm-hmm. like, you guys had some advanced screen pops where they had to know, click here. And if you fill out this, then other things would hide or show. And it yep. really changes the options the person on the other end of the phone can do. I know one of the companies we um, were comparing before when we were, this project you and I worked on together was basically 40 different companies from 20 different acquisitions that came into one. And they're just like, hey, we're going to have one report. How hard is this going to be? Right. So you and I got to just make it work. But there were a lot of nuances in terms of like, how are we going to do this? What do we want to do? I know Comcast was one that they kept bringing up and talking about because Comcast in their call centers, it's a captive call center. They don't, you know, we didn't do their work, but they would make it where if you called in, you would, the agent could only have like, let's say two options. But if you called in three different times within the same so many hours within a week, then the agent would have a third option now to give you a higher amount of money back. But if, had you not made those three phone calls in and they didn't see in the logs that you called in and asked for help because you were mad, they wouldn't even give that kind of option to their agents. So, I mean, there's a lot of that stuff that goes on that I don't think people have any idea about. You know what I mean? They call in and they just yell at the call center guy and then hang up. Right. But usually you want to work with them because they want to get you the right solution. You know, thank you for joining podcast like a business on our journey to discover just how everything is data. If you want to watch the next episode or one of our favorites, click on the thumbnails here for more Podcast Lab and find us wherever you like to listen to podcasts.